Well, at the Airstream International Rally in Freiburg, Maine, I ran into Charlie Nichols, who has an, an Airstream Super C that he built himself. Charlie was nice enough to give me a little bit of a walk around tour of the Airstream, so let's let him tell you all about it. Good morning. I did see the video on YouTube on this, yeah. so it's pretty cool. I like it. Thank you. A lot of work, I can imagine, but. Uh, yeah, and I'm always tinkering and changing and stuff, but basically it wasn't. I started it in late July, end of July one year, and left for Florida with it uh, in January. So it was six months. Yeah. Uh, but I retired and, and built this in a six month period. But you have to have a heck of a shop. I mean, just to get I that up on the chest. What's that? I did it outside. Really? Yes. How'd you lift it? I hired a building mover to pick it up, put it up in the air. I, said, I told him I needed it 48 inches in the air. He quoted me a price. He says it'll be 1,200 to live it and 400 to lower it. I said, me and gravity can lower it. You just get it up in the air and, and I got it set on the frame and I'd already cut the truck and lengthened the truck and had everything the way I kind of wanted it. And, yeah. Uh, so it was, it was pretty cool. Neat. Neat. So the secret is, and if I was to do another one, I would reverse that. So uh, it's not as simple as you would think in that trucks do this. They twist. Yes. Trailers can't twist. Right. Trailers go down the road like this. They don't bend a bit, because, especially with an airstream. Yeah. Uh, so you can only hook it at three points not four otherwise if you looked at it four corners you'd tear it to pieces in a thousand miles yeah um, it's mounted on a trailer ball right where you'd think it would be yeah so the tra the tongue has been shortened tongue's this long now and it's a trailer ball in the middle yeah it's mounted solid at the rear if i was to do it over it hasn't been a problem but if i was to do it over again i would reverse that and i would have it mounted solid at the front my trailer ball at the rear that way there would be less of this twist so whatever happens by the rear wheels defines the whole trailer going like this right right and so apparently I, the rear of the frame of the truck twists more than the right than, than the, the middle the, yes so i would reverse that if i was going to build another one it has not been a problem uh, and it's booted together so that it allows for that flat. right uh, so mm -hmm. this one folds out slides out Cover lays down. There's a 33 inch Craftsman toolbox in there with about 400 pounds of tools in there. Nice. So, so I'm all equipped on that front. There's no storage in here. I could have put storage in there, but I, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, this is just, this is just dry storage here. Just an old tank that had pinholes in it that I, I cut down, used for covers. Yeah. As I did that one, same tank actually, and then I singled my rear wheel to clear the. The black and the gray oh gotcha gotcha yeah so what i've done to compensate i run 110 pounds of air in my front tires 95 in the duels in the middle and 110 in the rear and it seems to work very well i've never had an issue state law in new hampshire where it's licensed was that if you could go from the driving area to the living quarters in a standing position it was an rv now i had to jump through certain hoops to make that true, but it's licensed as a, a motorhome. License plate is a passenger car plate with a 40,000 pound GVW. <laughs> uh, so it, it works. Um, I haven't had any issues. I've been cross country with it umpteen times. I commute to Texas with it every year, which I've got a second house down there. Mm -hmm. uh, it works well. It doesn't do bad on fuel mileage and it's got enough speed to go enough to get you in really big trouble if you wanted to step on it hard i can imagine yeah and, and, and you know aerodynamically i mean it's not it, bad no i can say the truck is a, the most least aerodynamic part of this the, right. the rounded edges yeah. are all above the cab so well, i get 6.75 miles per gallon uh and i am at a, a high idle at 80 miles an hour in high gear the one everybody gets the biggest kick out of this is this compartment uh, another dry storage compartment, which has a 16-foot inflatable pontoon boat in it, rolled-up <laughs> pontoon boat. And the outboard motor is a two-horse Honda that's under the step. Okay. All my propane is here, and that's, there's a 
30 pounder, a 20 pounder, a 30 pounder, and then a frame mounted 20 gallon tank. So I'm, I've got lots of possibilities. I'm set up for a tank out here if I yep. want it. It's kept you busy. I know, I know you mentioned in the other video that you're retired, so this has kept you busy in your retirement. It's been fun. It yes. It is more of an adventure. It was just an idea in my head. Yeah. And But what I didn't realize was that it was so unique that that would become part of the adventure. Yeah. Uh, I'm comfortable enough with that. It's, you know, I've gone all over the country with it umpteen times and it always gets attention. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> So, if, you, if you're not going to sneak in and be your average vehicle, people will remember. It. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It's been good for off-road camping. I got 200 watts of solar on the roof and diesel generator, and it's it's good. So Neat. Yeah. The stairs live in here. Yeah. Hook here. Come down as five stairs. There's a bottom step I put underneath, and the railing lives here. It attaches here. Attaches to the stairs here and attaches here. Yeah. Uh, works absolutely fine. And uh, booted so that you can just walk right through. You, you, it was fun re engineering it because frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, the couch, of course, was across the front. Yeah. But the state law said I had to be able to go through in a standing position. Now, standing means not on your knees. I go like that and I'm through. But well, I had to reverse engineer and the table that used to be over there is now over here the couch is that way along the wall over there right that gave me this much space to go through does work yeah I, no, I, my favorite part about this is that you've left the airstream stuff airstream oh, yeah. for the most part you know i mean yeah you know, everything below is customized and everything but you know it literally looks like you're hauling an airstream down the road on and a flatbed people make that mistake about thinking that it's not permanently attached. Yeah. I hope I never have to take it off. <laughs> uh, I dream occasionally about if I was good, and I'm not going to. I, I, I think I put the effort in. There's not enough effort left in me to build a new one. Yet. Yeah. And I would, if I was to do that, I would do it slightly different. And I'd start with a brand new Airstream as opposed to a slightly older one and mm -hmm. just do it. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with what I got. So. Yep. No, I think it, this is this is awesome. I mean, yeah. this is you know, it's a conversation piece wherever you go, oh, yeah. and you know, it just looks so cool. Yeah, it's it's definitely been fun. I mean, if it wasn't raining, you'd have a crowd out here. I know it. It's it's completely changed how my retirement would look. Yeah. Now the first five years we used it about six months a year. Uh, now that we have two houses, it's more or less becomes just a commuter vehicle mm -hmm. uh, with hopes of an occasional trip while we're down down in Texas in the winter. But we, we're pretty comfortable where we are and ha just having, you know, being six months a year on the road is, is different than, than taking a weekend trip. Mm -hmm. uh, the advantage of it over what I would say the advantage over a motorhome and the advantage over an Airstream is I'm not very limited in how much weight I can haul. Yeah. So my wife, if she wants to take, you know, a thousand pounds of something, it's not going to notice a thousand pounds. Of anything. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, few, the only major change on the Airstream itself is where the water tank is. Now that was... Uh, behind the rear wheels mounted sideways on the Airstream. I took that out and the, that same tank, 65 gallons of water I think it is, is now lengthwise between the frame of the truck and supported by the truck, not the Airstream. Oh, okay. But you still fill it through the Airstream hole. So. Uh, that was the only only real change. The septic stayed the same. By doing it, by singling out the wheels, I was able to clear all the, the yeah. septic. Uh, so, I mean, gravity goes downhill and poop flows downhill, and that needed to that would have been a difficult solution to come yeah. up with. Yeah. yeah. So by doing it that way, I, I I was able to set it nice and low, 
as opposed to eight to 10 inches higher to clear the tires if I had had to go up above the rear wheels mm -hmm. to, be able to go between them by taking out those inner wheels. Right, right. And it just works so much better. Yeah, otherwise you'd have to put a pump or something in there to get it past all that if oh, you kept God, the duels. Oh, would have been yeah. a nightmare. Yeah. So. Imagine. No, it's worked, worked out really, really well. So. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is so cool. And I, I'm really glad I saw you here. Okay. Um, you know. After seeing the video, it was on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, at the truck show. Yeah, I was, and, then, and I saw that you're from Vermont. No, I'm from New Hampshire. Or New Hampshire. I'm about Fifteen miles out. Okay, I, yeah. sorry, I knew you were close. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, I was just hoping you'd show up. <laughs> well, I'm glad to. What's your name? I'm Charlie Nichols. Charlie, nice to meet you. I'm Randy.